Hello there, welcome to a very special uh, edition of the vlog because I'm on safari. I did a couple of these videos uh, last year where I went to a safari park and I took some uh, pictures. Today I have brought with me this, uh, which I had in, in the last video as well. This is the uh, Fuji uh, 100 to 400 mil lens. Um, I'm hoping to get uh, off uh, most sort of um, uh, automatic settings. The only thing I'm keeping on automatic at the moment is the ISO. I'm going to put our uh, uh, shutter speed onto 500 and then aperture, uh, which I've got set to manual, uh, is going on to um, uh, 8 uh, because that is meant to be uh, where this lens has a, a bit of a, a sweet spot, so they 8 to 11 seems to be pretty good. They do say step down your lens uh, a little bit and you will get some good results. Now, one of the problems I've got with this lens, in the previous Safari uh, vlogs, what I was able to do was to look out of this window here, was to, if I unlock this lens, you'll see uh, what the problem is. If I zoom this lens out all the way, like so, I, it's, it's a very difficult shoot. Uh, I can't sort of get my eye, easily get my eye uh, to the thing. Uh, so I might actually have to rely on uh, the back of the thing if there's stuff out of that side of the car. I don't know that there will be. We'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I'm not properly into the place yet. Uh, however, I just wanted to mention about the weather. Um, we've got, it's nice and bright and sunny but it's also kind of overcast at the same time there's lots of cloud around uh, which is almost the perfect sort of day for doing this kind of shoot because we are um, in in this situation where uh, you don't have that harsh light that you'd normally get right now it's 12 o'clock it's midday so the harsh light really starts about now and then ends around about the um, sort of two, three o'clock mark. Uh, well, I don't think we're gonna have that problem today at all. The problem we are going to have is that this place is packed. Um, and uh, that's going to mean uh, that oh, we, have, we might run into problems with other people's cars being in the shot. Um, really, I'm looking out of, just shooting out of, of that window as much as possible because that negates any problems that I might have with the length of the lens, uh, with any you know issues with, with shooting and framing and all of that stuff that can all be, be done. The other problem that I have is since coming out on these uh, safari things before and going to a, a sort of lazy safariing, I think uh, it's probably a, a good thing to call it. Since doing that, uh, I've started wearing glasses to drive, so I have my glasses on as well. That has a bit of an impact when you then want to pick up a camera and uh, focus through the through the viewfinder. It's not it's not as easy as or it's not what I've been used to. Uh, although I've got these uh, sort of um, long distance glasses, so focusing on things that are. are so close to is fine. Um, that's not really my my problem. Although I do know that if you've got uh, some people uh, with with um, uh, different sorts of lenses, have to have different lenses for, for photography, which are different lenses for eating, eating, uh, driving. Sorry, and different lenses for reading. Um, I know uh, a couple of people who've got that that problem. Shouldn't have that problem today, uh, but it should be interesting. Uh, I will come back when we've actually hit some animals. I, I don't mean in the car, I mean when we've reached some, some animals. Um, and uh, I'll start going over uh, sort of settings that I'm using and how things have turned up. Also hill starts. How to do a hill start in, in a car when you're paying more attention to what else is going on around you. I will see you in a bit. Uh, this is the first big test for the lens. Uh, there's some rhino over there. Now, uh, settings as I had before, uh, we're on f8, 500 shutter speed, and I'm out at the reach of the lens. Now, I've still got this on wide tracking from yesterday, which isn't what I want. So I'm going to put this back onto single point, and my uh, shooting mode is on continuous, uh, which is, it means that when I hold down the, the, the shutter, in order to, oh, when I hold down the, the focus thing, I'm actually able to get uh, 
everything sharp. Hopefully, I've just got a rhino. Who knows? Now, let's have another go at this one. I'm actually able to get the whole thing in right now. But I can see why this um, uh, tracking is, is, a, is a really good idea. If I put it on wide tracking, it will track its face. Okay, so I don't have uh, as many problems uh, when it comes towards me. Um, it's quite good though. I think I'm getting some good shots here, which I've, I've failed to get rhinos in the past. And that's largely because, you know, they're, they're quite big creatures. So I've got them on wide tracking now. I'm letting the wide tracking do its thing. It seems to be picking up the right areas. I'm firing off as many shots as I can here. I'm going to move on. Because there's only a certain amount of shots that you need of a rhinoceros. Um, but that to me was uh, a good start to the day. Now I am going to be going around the safari park a couple of times. It takes a couple of hours to go around the, uh, the park itself. Um, so the plan is to just keep going round and round and round until I get bored. Later on in the day two things should happen. First of all the predators should sort of settle uh, at their places of, that they enjoy. Um, there is a, a, a place where the white lions will sit. That's where I got those fantastic shots uh, of the white lions last time I came here. Um, obviously I'm going to be wanting to kind of review what I've been doing uh, during the during the day. Uh, who knows how good it will turn out or how bad it will turn out. Um, but it's uh, so far going pretty well. Now I'm in an area of the park where I'm able to keep my windows down. You can't do that through all of the parts, so that issue is going to come into play uh, a little bit later on. Uh, but for now, pretty happy with the rhino thing, uh, and I, I think that the settings that I'm using are all right. I'm going to do a quick review of those as soon as I get a chance, uh, and we'll get a better idea of how everything's going. I had struggled to get rhinos right in the past, so I was very pleased with how this image turned out. Not only was it sharp across the image, but it's edited up quite well, I think. I wound up with between 10 and 20 images for each stop I made, and that left me with over 800 images to select from at the end of the day. The benefit of that, of course, was that I was more likely to get the right shot and get a shot that was in focus, although the camera and the lens did a very good job of keeping everything sharp for me. After a bit of a disappointment going through the cheetah enclosure, I wound up at the lions. There are lions. We're at the lions. I can see a lion. I don't know that I'll be able to get a picture of a lion. Um, it's lion down at the moment. Not a bad pun. Not a great pun either, I must admit. Um, but I need the other cars to move on and they're not moving on and I've got a feeling that they're not going to move on whilst they're all going, oh look there's a lion! Which is fair enough, they've come here for a nice day out and everything. Um, I can't, I can't, I'm not going to be able to get this. If I try doing this through the window, through the front window, take the glasses off for a sec, it's not going to work properly because I can see the lion there. Am I on, I'm on continuous. I want to be on single point for this. I can see the lion there, I can take a picture, but I don't think that's actually going to, uh, going to work. Um, because the way that the glass in the front of the car oh there's more of them as well they've been they've been inside the cars if i can get some of these they, that'd be great that'd be a fantastic shot they're all lying down together but they're all lying down now completely <laughs> this is the problem with um with big cats they do just kind of lie around a lot um Occasionally they'll put their head up. So if I can get these guys to move on, I can't do anything, obviously, I'm just going to wait. Uh, if these guys move on a little bit, then maybe I'll be able to get a shot, but they, they're all looking very 
sort of determined to stay where they are at the moment. Moving forward a bit. I'm going to try. I don't know where it is. There we go. I don't think that's going to come out with this. If I can just get round a little bit more. There we go. This is a lot better. Sticking it back on single point now. No, he's lying down now. That's it. Well, that was my encounter with lions, at least the first time round. It's a nice little bunch there, and if they stay around this area, then that'll be good. Um, but I'm wondering if there's a few more of them. I think there are a few more on the other side of the road. I'm just going to signal, see if I can get across here. I can't really see, I need my glasses on. Uh, I'm not sure, actually I'm not sure there are any more on the other side of the road. I think that might be it. Uh, but uh, a couple of shots of a lion there and they might be quite good. As it turned out, they were quite good. And once again, I didn't have much of a problem with sharpness in these images, the camera and the lens combination handling that incredibly well. What I found when I was editing was how much lions actually blend in with the grassland. So this first image I produced in black and white. Even then, it was tricky to balance out the, the texture of the dense undergrowth behind them with the actual texture of the lion itself. But for the second image, I'd pulled out a little bit and I got this. Now, in the edit for this image, I deliberately accentuated the colours of the lion so they'd stand out a little more from the background. And I think it actually worked rather well. I did love to see that one of the other lions had its paw rested on our lion's back. I think that adds to the shot. But overall, very pleased with these images. Definitely the best shots I have of a male lion. But there was plenty more to come. Well, it's been an interesting go round this first time. I don't think I'm quite finished yet, but I'm pretty much there. We're just entering the Kingdom of the White Lion, which I think is towards the end of the park. Um, I've got some amazing shots from, from this place before. The very first picture that I took nine years ago that I was inordinately happy with was a was a white lion at this very uh, safari park that's I did I wasn't doing photography for very long at that point I moved on to film very very quickly um, but then coming back here last year I got some amazing shots of the of the white lions uh, stuff that I'm still really really proud of uh, I don't know where they'll be right now it's the time of day it's lunchtime they tend to be lounging around, often lying down in uh, in the fields, fields in the long grass, I should say. But you never know with these, and I have got, if it turns out okay, I can't quite see it in the back of the camera, but it looks like I might have got a pretty nice lion face in that last, uh, last round of shots. Uh, the big problem, of course, is going to be whether or not uh, I can get Anyway, I mean, I'm going to have to put the camera off now, anyway, because uh, it might be another half hour before I actually get round to the liony bit. Uh, so far, I've only got a few shots. Uh, lions, rhino, and that's about it. Um, I tried to get an African dog, uh, but uh, they were, again, they were lying down. It's that time of day. It's the, the time of day where predators kind of have a rest. So... Uh, I'll be very lucky if I get anything this, this go round. But there are other goes round that I can do and um, we will try that a little bit later. As for the camera, as for the lens, uh, this is my second day of using the lens proper. Uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying it actually. The, the camera, the, the mix of the different tracking that you can do, wide tracking I've found to be absolutely phenomenal. Um, a zone tracking is meant to be very good as well, but wide tracking in particular, I've had an awful lot of success with. So very pleased with that. The lens is brilliant. The lens is so much nicer than my 18 to 300 that I had with the old camera. Um, it's very sharp and it, it's just, it's nice. It's nice to use. Um, so I am, 
it's definitely going to have to be something that I pick up, definitely. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm getting some good results on this, I think. And, uh, and it's easier. You see, the, the big thing for me about the new lenses, the new camera setup, everything really, is that I'm getting better results. The hit rates for everything that I do are going up exponentially. With the birds, um, the wildfowl trust, I found that I wasn't really, I, I wasn't getting everything sharp and I didn't really expect to, but I was getting more keeper shots. I got about 20 odd shots out of taking 800, but then you have to uh, remember that I was taking them in, in bursts of five or 10 at a time. So 800 shots, really is about 80 shots and to get kind of 20 shots out of that that's sort of an amazing keep rate really usually it's much much lower than that anyway as we round the corner here i can see them i can see the white lines there they're sat above the cars which may cause a problem i don't know but they are out, they are moving around. Um, and this was the, the same place, the same situation I was in when I got those fantastic shots last year. Um, if I'm very, very lucky, I can get something similar this year. Uh, but I have to wait for all of the cars to move first and I have to make sure that I'm in the right position. If I can come out of today with a white lion shot, something that, that doesn't even have to rival last year's white lion shot, but it just has to be um, better than I was expecting from today. I'll be thrilled. I'll be absolutely thrilled. These guys. There is a wire right in front of him, but now I'm going to put this on single point. We're focused, aligned. Shots are taken, if I can get... Oh, this is tricky. But I think I've got here... Pull it back a little bit. I'm gonna try putting it on continuous and on wide again because this has been uh, really useful actually, this wide tracking. Uh, turn that off, do that. For some reason I get sports finder mode on here all the time. Um, we're on wide tracking now. So if I track, if I get it onto the eye, I can move around and it will keep it on the eye. Pull up a little bit from that. And it does mean that I can refocus this, reformat this uh, as much as I need to. Now, the other, the other lion... Nice. The... Oh, oh, and they're lying down there. I'm definitely going to come back around this way a little bit later. Uh, but for now, I think I'm going to move on and let some other people have a look at the lion. The light from today was nowhere near as good as it was for my previous visit, so it was inevitable that I wouldn't get a shot that I was quite as happy with. But I did get this lovely white lion shot, and it was sharp across all of the frames that I took as well, which is a real testament to the Fuji and the 100-400mm lens. It's an amazing combination. I didn't see much more on my first trip around the park, or rather, there wasn't much more I wanted to take a picture of, and I ended up finishing at half past two. It had taken nearly four four hours to make a full trip around the park, so I didn't think I'd be able to do more than about one more circuit that day. After a quick stop to grab a bite to eat and a little bit of drink, I started on my second go round. Well, it's the second time round. I didn't think I'd be making this uh, a video quite so uh, quick.
quickly. I thought I'd probably go around again and then get something. But I've just got uh, a cheetah. Uh, finally saw a cheetah, took some pictures of it, took a bit of video of it as well, and uh, took the camera away from my eye to find out that it's raining, raining quite badly. So I'm not sure how the rest of this shoot's going to go. It may have to be abandoned because of weather. And if you live in the UK, uh, then you'll know kind of what that's like. Um, however, I'm still soldiering on, going into the African uh, wild dogs at the moment, so don't expect to see anything much here, um, because I've only ever seen them once, really. Um, but I seem to be able to focus through the window, even though there's some rain on it. Uh, so I may get a shot or two if they're in the right position, if everything goes well. It may not be as sharp as I was um, I was hoping, but then those are the things that you've got to contend with when you're taking photos from a car window. Um, anyway, I think that's going to be it for this particular trip. Uh, I can't see myself sticking around for another go round, so uh, that's it. What I'll do now is put all of this into Lightroom and I will show you uh, what I've finally got out of this lens and cam camera combination. Something that I think is actually pretty remarkable. I'm incredibly impressed uh, with this combination of kit, uh, with the uh, tracking that the camera can do, uh, with the, even the fact that uh, it's now gone quite quite dull, which is a, a nice day for doing animals because you've evened out all of that light. Um, even so, uh, the, the dullness is, is not causing a problem uh, for the uh, for the camera at all and, and the lens, uh, I'm still stopped down to f8. Uh, I'm still at 500, and the the ISO is sort of sorting itself out. So I expect I'll have some higher ISO shots, but that's okay. It seems seems to be working. I'm right where the African wild dogs are right now, and there are no African wild dogs <laughs> at all. Oh, they're at the back. They're at the back, and the rain's really coming on now. So I. I don't think I'll be able to get anything more. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at what we did manage to get uh, before the heavens opened uh, by taking a look at the final shots that I got from this in life. And here they are. Well, here are the shots of the cheetah, at least. I did one in black and white and another one in colour, and I had to remove a lot of bars from this image so it turned into a bit of a difficult edit. But my trip really had come to an end at this point. It was a bit of a disappointment, but as you can see, I still managed to get one or two shots. The rain did hinder things a lot. My hit rate went down terribly, but for the first time, I was able to get a few shots of the tigers. Most of them ended up being out of focus because of a combination of the cage and the rain, but there were a few shots that seemed to work okay. My favourite shot of the trip was actually of this white tiger, and I didn't think when I was taking the photo that I actually got any of that tiger. And I especially like how he's got his tongue sticking out in this one. I think it tells more of a story than just seeing the animal's face. Because this guy was a little further from the cage, it was a little bit easier to edit out the links, so I ended up with a nice image here. Anyway, that's it for this trip. I hope you've enjoyed it. If so, please do leave a like, and if you like what you see or do you, you just want to be a good person, then hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell icon at the end, and then click on the all notifications box that pops up as well. That way, you'll see any new videos that I make when they get released. And until next time, thanks very much for coming along. And don't forget, keep taking those pictures.